Hello and welcome to another budget and leggy video. Today we are going to do a front wheel bearing on a 2005 Freelander. Now, how do you know when the wheel bearing's gone? There's a few ways of knowing. You, sometimes you can hear, well most of the time, you can hear like a whirring noise. The faster you go, the more the whirring noise gets. This isn't actually making noise, it just goes to show that not all bearings do that. Another way of telling is when you jack it up, you can spin the wheel and you can hear it very rough. Now it's very difficult to spin these wheels because it's four wheel drive, it's going through all this, it's quite difficult. But again, it sounds, it sounds fine. But we've got play in the wheel. Now the camera might not show it up, but as I'm, I, I got, I've got play left to right and also play up and down. Now again, let me get the camera closer. I don't know if it's going to pick up the sound, but we'll try. Hopefully that picked it up and that. Hopefully the camera picked that up. So that's the noise, you've got play up and down, left to right. Now, once you've got play, it's still important to check that your track rod ends and your ball joints aren't warm. These aren't warm, so we definitely know it's the bearing. So we need to whip off the wheel. Once we've got the wheel off, turn the camera back on and we'll get to it. Right, what we need to do is we need to take the hub off. And the way we do that is we need to take the caliper and the carrier off. We need to take the disc off. We need to disconnect the suspension. So that on this particular car, there's two bolts. We also need to disconnect the ABS sensor. If you have ABS, that just depends on your car. And then we also need to take out the bottom board joint and take out the dry shaft. And that essentially will let us out, will give us the hub out. What I like to do first is just all the bolts that are exposed, I like to give them a good wire brushing because as you can see there's all crap on here and that just makes your life hard to try and take the nut off. So give them a good wire brushing, spray loads of WD or any kind of oil on it, kind of and oil. Do the same with the ball joint. What we have to do, we have to be very careful, especially with the ABS sensor. I'll show you it, but the ABS sensor has a little connection onto the hub. You can't quite see it, but once I get to it, I'll show you. And it's a 10 mil bolt, but if that bolt snaps, we're in serious trouble. And they do snap, and they like to snap just for the hell of it. So we are going to have to be careful. But why that is doing everything, I'm going to be taking off the main bolt here and I'm going to take off these two um, Phillips screws to actually disconnect the disc because I always forget to do them and it's easier to do them once the caliper is on. Right, the easiest way I find to do these is get a screwdriver you can hit. So I've got an old screwdriver here. This side. Now it won't necessarily always work but it, it, it does work most of the time. I'm going to hit it and turn it at the same time. And as we can see, that is loosened. That has loosened that screw. Now, if that doesn't work, you can always wedge the disc against the caliper. But if you take, if you take the caliper off, you can't do that. So again, I'm going to do the same here. See if I can get this a little bit better on Phil. Nice and easy. Now for the centre nut we need a 36mm socket. There we go. That comes off. Good sign that the CV joint is free. So we're not going to be struggling with that. I'm not going to be able to get you down in here but this is where the ABS sensor is. There's a 10mm I'm going to hopefully I need to get the bolt out, but not only if we get the bolt out, we still need to get the ABS sensor out. And they can both be as hard as each other to get out. So let's see what happens. A 10mm socket. And just as I thought, which is an absolute nightmare, the bolt has snapped. 
That is just a pig now. But there's not a lot we can do about it. Now I've got to try and get the ABS sensor out. Now at least we got the ABS sensor out. All I did is I got the little screwdriver and I just went round the edge very carefully and then wiggled it and it broke loose. But you had the problem of the bolt being stuck in there. It happens, there's not a lot you can really do. You can't put heat on it because you'll burn the ABS sensor. It's just one of them things unfortunately. But it just makes my life a lot harder. Now it's important we don't wedge this like I do in my other videos between the disc and the pads because we, we need to keep the pads because they're good. So I'm just going to try and get this on the disc and the caliper and actually just force the caliper if I can. If not, it's not the end of the world. It just makes it easier to put it back on if I can get, if I can get a bit on it. Now I've managed to get it between the caliper and the actual pad, but on the caliper side, so I haven't done any damage to the pad. You just force it back a little bit. Now it just makes it easy, I can take off the carrier and the disc in one go. 15 mil to take off the carrier. Oh, wasn't supposed to come out all the way, but not to worry with the air gun, we'll get away with it. Yeah, it's normally best to loosen both of them first, but the power of the air gun does kind of let you get away with it. Right, what I need to do now is, you can now take this off, and what I'm going to do is put a bungee cord through it, and hook it onto the caliper, onto the spring. It just gets it out of my way, doesn't put any pressure on anything, and uh, yeah, it's out of my way basically. Now the dish should come off. Sorted. Now, what we've got left is the bottom board joint and the two top. Uh, suspension bolts and it'd be easier to try and crack this bottom ball joint now there's pressure on it because if you were to loosen off the suspension when you're trying to undo this if the whole thing starts turning because there's no pressure on it so it's going to be easy now to try and get this off now it's a 21 mil spanner and there's no guarantee it's not going to spin and what I mean by spin is the whole thing spins you'll see hopefully this won't but what I'm going to do is to make this a bit easier for me I'm going to put another spanner 22 mil spanner just to extend it and hopefully we can get the we can crack it. So first just let let it turn. Now I hope that's turned enough. We can get it in this end and now try and crack the bolt. There we go. Now, I hope you can see a bit better now. So, but like I said, there's still no guarantee the whole thing won't start spinning. Right, there's no point me filming this because I'm just going to undo a bolt. Once I get it off, if it starts spinning, I'll turn the camera back on, but if not, I'll turn the camera back on when we come to the suspension. Now I've managed to loosen the bolt. I can't get it all the way off because there's not enough clearance, but I'm going to crack the ball joint now. Because again, it's easier to crack the ball joint with this tied in up here. And I've, I've shown you this on my films before. It's a one man ball joint cracker, supposedly. But even with this, sometimes you still need two people. So I put it on top of my ball joint. And all I've got to do, technically, is to push down under the end. 
and as you can see nothing happens. <laughs> so what we can do is put pressure on it and hit it the hammer. See, even with this, there's no guarantees it's going to uh, move. There we go. We got it cracked. Still don't have enough room to take this bolt out, but that's not important yet. Next thing I do is take out these two suspension bolts here. 18 mm um, spanner and a 21 mm nut. That's let's get this here. So hopefully now these will come off straight forward. problems. The vibrations is going all the way through the spanner and it just fucking hurts. I'll try and do it with this but even this can have its problems. That doesn't want to spin off anymore. What I'm going to do is when I get these bolts off, I'll turn the camera back on because I'm just going to be swearing too much for these fucking bolts. A right, couple of things, with this little M6 uh, bolt, with only a couple of threads sticking out, I'm telling you now, it's absolutely pointless to try and get anything on that to screw it out. It's just not going to work. If it was a big heavy duty bolt and you had, you know, a good half inch sticking out, yeah, no problem, you can do it. But with what we've got here, there is just no way of trying to get it out. We're going to have to drill it. There's just, it's going to be the quickest, easiest way rather than trying to mess around, do anything else with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the bolt straight. Now, make sure you wear goggles and all that sort of stuff. important you get the bolt nice and flat it just makes your life a lot easier when you're coming to try and drill it out the next very important thing we need to do is get a center punch and punch the middle of the bolt because it's a lot easier to start the drill bit if you try and start the drill bit if you don't get that directly in the middle it could go off and especially what you're working on it might be very important to get this directly in the middle so we're going to do that next we need to line this up in the middle of the bolt and give it a good bang. Now, hopefully that will come through. If I get the camera a bit closer, you can see exactly what that's done. 
you can see the size of the indentation that's made in the bolt. That gives us a really good start for our drill bit. Now we've got an M6 uh, bolt. This is the one I'm going to put back. So you need to make sure you get the right thread and stuff, but you'll know that depending on, on what you're actually using. Now this bolt is too long, but it's going to give me an idea of if it's going to screw in and if it's going to work. Because we're using an M6 bolt, we need a five mil drill bit it's very important you get the right size drill bit for the right size hole if you go too big the threads won't be sharp enough and the bolt would just destroy the threads if you go too small you're going to most probably damage the tap break the tap inside there which is going to cause you more problems so you do need to get the exactly right drill bit for what you're doing we need an m5 and this way you just need to take your time Make sure you're nice and straight. Keep spraying some lube on it so you don't destroy your drill bit. And what you can keep doing if you're not sure, you just keep double checking to make sure you're online. The hardest part about all this is just making sure you're drilling online. Make sure the drill bit's nice and straight and just take your time. It's important you get your, your, your drill at the right depth first because you don't want to thread it and then drill it because you haven't drilled, drilled the hole deep enough because that just will not work. Now that does look to be deep enough. It looks to be nice in the middle as well so that's good. How deep my hole is. Now you can see that's how deep it is. That's going to be plenty for an ABS sensor, you know, we don't need it. It's not, it's not really holding it, it's just holding the ABS sensor in place. It's under no stress. So, now what I need to do is get my tap and then start actually tapping the bolt. All right, so what I've done is I've put it in a little holder. And again, this is important too. You need to make sure you're nice and straight and it should just go in be nice and straight, be nice and careful and you should feel it going in and start cutting now we've started now so that's a good sign a bit of lube again never hurts now what I'm essentially doing is I'm not actually really cutting new threads because lucky enough I got directly in the middle of the um, old bolt and just literally taking the old bolt away and renewing the threads that were there so it should be fairly straightforward once you get down a few just turn it back just to break all the burr away and keep screwing it in now you do have to be careful because these taps they're not completely flat the the, the point of it's going to hit before the threads start you have to be careful because there's a, there's a point on these taps and if you go too far, the, the tap's going to bottom out on the edge of the bolt, it's going to snap. So don't force it. As you can see, this is going nice and easy. After you've done a couple of threads, turn it back. Keep going. Now, I'm at the bottom, I can't really do much more than that. So I'm going to screw it out completely. You can 
can see all the crap it's bringing up with it, which is good. So a bit more lube. Blow it all out. And we have some lovely threads in place. And now hopefully this bolt should thread in. Let's just see if it does. The bolt threads in. So what I can either do now is I can either cut this one down or I can find another M6 that's slightly smaller. I just wanted to see if that would actually go in and how it felt. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. What I'm going to do is just run this down one more time. Just in case there's any bits of crap left. See, even with putting WD down and blowing it, you can still see there's tiny little bits left there. So it's always a good thing just to double check. And that's what I was saying about, as you can see, the threads start where my fingernail is. So there's a couple of mil where there's no threads. And that's what hits first. But I'm looking down there and that is absolutely spot on. I was just, uh, yeah, just... The, if it wasn't for the centre punch, I would have never got that in the middle. It's the centre punch that made my life easy. You can see there, you can see the threads in it, which are lovely. Now we can get to uh, putting the bearing out and the new one in. Now there's just no way I can mount this on my press to take out the inner hull. Just because the way these are designed, they're, they're, they're a nightmare. Even though I have a very special thing on my um, press, which I'll show you when we get the bearing out, but at the minute, this is where I'm going to have to do it. Don't like doing it this way, but kind of got no choice. Because if I try and do it the other way, I'm just going to do damage. And unfortunately, I can't take off this dust guard because the three bolts that are holding on, they're all rusty and they'll break and they'll cause me even more problems. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my air tool to pop out the centre of this. You can also hit this with the hammer but the problem is that can cause other problems. I found this way to be easier. Um, causes less damage. It's just bloody noisy. And there we go. So we've got the centre hub out. Now hopefully we can get this on the press to do the rest. That rhymes! Get this on the press to do the rest. Sorry, sorry about that. As you can see, I've got one of these special things for my press. This is completely adjustable in every sort of way possible. There's loads of different holes and you can mount any hub. So, but they are, they are expensive, so you're not going to really use them for a kind of a normal thing. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the old style way of doing it to stop everyone moaning at me for uh, using expensive tools. What I first got to do, there's a little circlip, I don't know if you can see that. Built inside here is a circlip. So I'm going to get that out first, then I'll put it on the press. There's no point me showing you, it's just taking off a circlip. So as soon as I've done that, I'll put this on the press. Now I've got the circlip out and all I've done is i just put the two big blocks underneath the main part of it. I've put a socket in the middle of the bearing so we can now press it out. Hopefully, if the press isn't too low, I have a funny feeling it is. Now we're ready. This is why it's good to keep old bearings. I'm putting an old bearing in its place to push out the old one. So, we'll just get it lined up first 
Now, I want to make sure we're in the middle before I carry on. Once I'm happy, everything is level. We're on good, solid bits of metal. And I will then be happy to try and press this bearing out. Now what you want to do is when you're pressing something, you, you don't really want to be leaving any pressure on these points here, because the, these will bend, and that's what your caliper goes to. Now they will bend, but you might not even notice them bending. But then your disc won't line up properly, your caliper won't line up properly. Now this could just go kind of bang, because this is going to be... Now there's a lot of pressure on that there now. I'm kind of hoping that would go. So, one more pump. Now, see this is another problem now. I don't want to keep pumping that because I could end up breaking absolutely everything. But there's a hell of a lot of pressure on that there now and it still hasn't gone. So what I might do is I might just leave that for a few minutes and just see if the pure pressure will um, let it go. Once it cracks the first time it's okay. You see what can happen is if the bearing, sometimes I've seen the bearing seize inside the hub. Now that normally happens when the bearing is a lot worse than this. If you leave the bearing too long they, they heat up and they basically weld themselves inside the, the actual stub. But you know, we just don't know. I'll give one more pump again. One more. There we go. And if you saw that and heard that, that hopefully should be it now. And there we go. There's always that point where you just think, should I go one more or should I just leave it? You see the old bearing? the old bearing, the other bits on the stub axle but that's the old bearing and again I will keep that because you never know when that will come in handy now what we need to do is we need to check to make sure there's nothing in here that is worn there's no lips there's no horrible marks you put your finger around it all and there isn't. Now, a lot of people do say to me, oh, you're supposed to, you're supposed to sand these. You're, supposed to, you're not supposed to sand them. If you sand them, you're just gonna, you're gonna cause yourself problems. What you need to do is check that there's no damage in here. If there's no damage in here, give it a, a, a quick clean with a rag, spray plenty of WD-40 on it, and I can assure you that's enough.